I think one of the problems, personally, I think one of the problems that we face communicating climate change is it feels the Earth is too big to affect. But I think when you start to see images like this, it doesn't look particularly robust. <laughs> and, and it isn't, of course. What is science? It's been delighted with standing on the edge of the known and looking into the unknown. That's what research is. If you think of some of the questions that are posed by cosmology, they're, they're terrifying questions. I mean, this image, I should say, is a, the entire arc of the Milky Way across the sky. There are 400 billion suns in this galaxy, 400,000 million stars, trillions of planets, um, about 100,000 light years across. So even that is the you know, light, take 100,000 years to cross this thing. So questions about our place within it uh, are obviously the, the challenging questions. It would feel as if we're insignificant. How optimistic are you that we can look after our universe with all the challenges and, and all the stresses uh, that we witness at the moment? We don't know, but it's possible to argue that life in the universe might be common in the form of microbes. We don't know, we've, we've yet to discover any beyond Earth, but we're really optimistic, perhaps we might discover it on Mars or one of Jupiter's moons. And in the context of what we're talking about, looking after this world, protecting this civilization, it could be that this is the only place, that little crescent, where collections of atoms, I always say, collections of atoms, which are human beings that can think, exists. As a human being, is a collection of atoms that can think about the world. I think one of the problems, personally, I think one of the problems that we face communicating climate change is it feels the Earth is too big to affect. It just feels like it's impossible for these little ants to affect this world. But I think when you start to see images like this, it doesn't look particularly robust. <laughs> and, and it isn't, of course. I think we know what to do. It then becomes a, a political issue, I suppose, which is where I think the communication of ideas, like the ones we've talked about, uh, becomes important. If you'd have said to Stephen Hawking at, so in the 70s, um, we should invest in your research because in 50 years' time, there are going to be these things we haven't even dreamt of yet. And the skills you need and the knowledge you acquire by studying these collapsed stars will be relevant, very relevant, in making these things work, which may be the way that we model the climate with more accuracy, which may help us with mitigating climate change and so on. You would, uh, you would have been laughed at. So it, the, the, the moral is that studying nature is useful, but you never know which bits are useful to make a profound change. So, and the, the answer, therefore, to government is you need a broad science base. I was asked to give a little video introduction to the COP Climate Summit in Glasgow. It was one of those where the, the world leaders who were there were going to watch the video. And, and so I said to them, but so we, we often ask, what does it mean? I said, what does it mean to live a finite, fragile life in an infinite, eternal universe without things as complex as human brains? I would argue that the, essentially the, the galaxy, the, the solar system, whatever, is meaningless. Meaning emerges from us. So, so I said at the end that you're the world leaders, so therefore, uh, if this is the only place where meaning exists, you're responsible for it. So if you are responsible for destroying our civilization through deliberate action or inaction, then each of you will be personally responsible for destroying meaning in a galaxy of 400 billion suns, potentially forever. Have a nice meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.